Happy New Year. Welcome to another episode of the Knit My Way Home podcast. This will be quite a short episode. Um, I just wanted to come stop by and catch you up with some of the things that I've been knitting because we have another episode that will be out in probably about a week um, that has that's a proper Knit My Way Home episode with cooking and knitting and a little bit of outdoor and a little bit of indoor and lots of activity um, some reflections over what we've done through the holiday season and I hope that you had a wonderful time uh, whether you celebrate Christmas or Hanukkah or the solstice or whatever it is that you do at this time of year I hope that you're enjoying. January is my absolute favorite month and I am so very happy that it's it's now. <laughs> um, so let's get going right away, shall we? Um, we're going to go for a little walk and I, I'll take you outside and you can see why I just love January. So off we go. So we're outside in the middle of the day this is as high as the sun is going to get, and I'm not sure if you're going to see it even. So that is the height of the winter sun. I don't know if I've ever, ever taken you on a walk before, um, and I'm not even sure how it's going to work out. It might be too bumpy, and this might end up all going into a blooper reel or something, but I wanted to take you out because January is absolutely my favorite month. And I know that a lot of other people, it's not their favorite month. And probably a lot of people wonder, how can you live in the subarctic and call January your favorite month? But I think it's spectacularly beautiful. I love winter and I think that this is pure winter wonderland. This is why I love living in the Yukon. It's just very, very beautiful and peaceful and wintry. I love it. It's January the 4th today and it's minus 14 and I'm absolutely perfectly warm. Now, I am wearing several layers of wool. I have a wool undershirt and then I have a wool shirt on under this and then I have this beautiful jumper that I finished um, November maybe and I haven't filmed it yet for the podcast. So this is my most recent finished color work yoke and I love it. This is the Tresta, which means dream by Knit Love Wool or Jennifer Steingas. Uh, the cowl is from Lotta Lothgren. It's one of her patterns and also her hand dyed yarn which is stunningly beautiful and I highly, highly recommend. Now the toque you've seen lots and lots of times because it is one of my absolute favorites. This is New Tiden yarn. It's undyed New Tiden. It's from mm, a few years ago now, maybe two or three years ago. And the pattern is by Albina McLaughlin. It's called the Ever hat and I really, really love this toque. I just, it's the shape of it that I like. I like this being, the ribbing here being close around my face and then having a bit more volume because I have these very high cheekbones. And if I wear one of those tight fitting hats, I don't know, I don't think they work on me. You see what that would look like? Too much face for me. So a little bit more volume in the hat, I find balances the lookout a little bit better and I just prefer it. The jumper I also made with knitted in. This was um, three colorways that they, three, four, is it? 
all four are from anyhow I don't know three or four colorways either all of them are from or or one of them isn't but they're from um, the midsummer collection that was available to patreon only and uh, I think that they are the perfect colors for our winter I love this jumper I wear it all the time so you can see that I probably should have taken pictures a little while ago when it was still fresh but I wear it almost every day I love it that much I hope that you can hear the sound of the snow crunching this is just one of the paths around our house oh there you can very well see how high the sun gets in the middle of the day here. We only have about four hours of daylight right now in early January. And yeah, this is oh, around two o'clock in the afternoon and the sun's already going down. So, well, yeah, <laughs> you get the idea. So this is winter in subarctic Canada. January, my absolute favorite and I'm so delighted to share it with you. Isn't the sunlight in January absolutely beautiful? I'll try to flip this around. Let's go this way. Find Peter and Foxy. I really wish you could be here. You're just not seeing it the way that we do. I don't know how to catch it on the camera and I'm sorry that you don't see what we see but I think you get a taste for it and why I love January so much. I just think this is magical. We are so happy to see the sky we haven't seen the sky in weeks. It's been very cloudy. We haven't seen blue in weeks and weeks. It's been only gray. So this is a lovely day. Look at that. So for the last long while, it's been more like that. Actually darker. Look at the difference. So nice. We're back warm and cozy inside. I hope that you enjoyed that. Uh, let's start with what I'm wearing because this is the most most recent thing that I've finished and to be honest I'm not totally comfortable with it yet. I It's very very soft. I would love it if I could just share it with you and you could try it on but I've been fiddling around with the fit because I, I'm not convinced that that this is the right fit for me. So this it, it might be maybe I just have to get used to it. Um, I like the idea of it, so I am going to wear it for at least a month before I decide whether or not to take it apart and redo it. Because maybe it will stretch out, I think it probably will, it's alpaca, so, and you know that alpaca stretches, but um, it's bunching in a funny way. You see, it's got some shaping, and I'm not convinced that the shaping is is the best, at least not for me. So what this pattern is, is this is the cinch by Jackie Rose. And she has a number of these patterns. The cinch is, I think, a paid for pattern, but she has also got the Friday shrug, the Saturday shrug, and the Sunday shrug. And I have knit both the Friday shrug, which is the, um, I think that one's the DK weight, and the Saturday Shrug, which is the about Erin weight, worsted weight, Erin weight, 
and Natalia is right now knitting the Sunday Shrug and she's almost finished it. Um, she actually took over knitting it for me. I was knitting the Sunday Shrug but uh, you knit it on quite big needles and the big needles, they hurt my hands. Let's talk about this one though. So you see how it's, I think I just have to get used to that, but you see how that's, it's bunching, right? So I'm not sure, I'll have to play with it, but this one, the cinch shrug, this one has shaping around the top to create this funnel. And I thought that I would like that, but it's meant to create this sort of funnel neck to keep warm. And then you kind of slide into it as you do with the others. And, and maybe it's going to adapt to my body. Yes, tell me that it will. So, cause I, when it's pulled down, I like it, but I don't want to constantly have to be finicking with it. But I do absolutely love the yarn that I knit it in. And I have to say that having it around my neck is super comfortable. So maybe I just should have made it a few more stitches here. I'm not sure, but you see it's doing it again. I don't know. Let's see what happens over time. How about that? <laughs> I don't know. We'll find out. We'll see how it goes. But uh, let's talk about the yarn because the yarn is beautiful. This is Lamb and Kid. It's been a tough year this year. Some of you know that my dad is not doing very well. Um, he has cancer and we've been struggling a lot with that. I've been traveling back and forth to where he lives, which is quite far. Um, it's an airplane ride from where I live. So I've been going back and forth a lot and um, managing his health from remotely from here, managing his doctor's appointments and whatnot. And um, so I, I do have a very, very kind and gracious friend who said, you know, I, I want to help and there's nothing that I can do to help, but I wish I could help. And so can I treat you to some yarn? And oh, what a treat it really is. It's, I don't, it, there isn't anything that you can do. You know, sometimes we have to go through these things on our own and it's just the way that life is. But this was the kindest, most generous thing that my friend could have done, um, but I got to pick it out. So um, some, some beautiful luxury yarn that I'm not sure I would have bought just bought on my own. So that, that was something really, really, really special. And so this is some of that yarn. This is Big Birdie. And Big Birdie was having a bit of a, um, a bit of a moment in 2023. Lots of people were very excited about it because Big Birdie is uh, alpaca, very thick, um, very squishy and soft and lovely. And so I wanted to knit in it as well. And um, it's beautiful. Lamb and Kid does not disappoint with colors. The colors are rich. The dye is beautiful. Um, and I enjoyed knitting this one very much. So the top color there, this is olives. And then the pink is called Tattersall. And the um the tan color the brown color is called waverly and then at the bottom this is three dog night and yeah it's it's something very 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 special so i'm hoping that with wear i will start to enjoy the fit a little bit more but it's beautiful i i really like the colors and they're not coming through very well right now because I live in the north and it's dark but I'll try to get I'll try to get some pictures in good light and then put those in for you or if I don't manage to put them into this episode I will post on Instagram. So the cinch starts off small and then there's a series of increases that funnel the the cowl out. And that's the part that I'm not convinced is working for me. 
So the cinch, you do have to kind of pay attention to where you are putting it on as well, because you want to make sure that you're getting those increases along your shoulder so that it, first of all, it sits nice. And secondly, it looks right. So I, I think I have to just play with it. But anyhow, it is awfully warm and cozy because it's alpaca. It's, uh, I love the color. I, I really love the feeling of the yarn, but I like alpaca. So, um, yeah, so I think I just have to, have to let it sort of mold to my body. Now I did knit the other two, the Saturday and the Friday, the Friday was a gift, so it's gone. Um, and I don't normally photograph gift knits, so I don't even have photos of it, but that was a fun one to knit. Oh, and the other thing I wanted to say is this one, um, the olives I had ordered for something else. And so I just used a tiny little bit and the three dog night is for something else. So again, I only used a tiny little bit of it, one at the top and one at the bottom, but um, the Tattersall and the Waverly, I had full skeins of. And this is something really interesting. So this shrug took one whole skein of the Waverly. This is it. And I left this piece out because this is all that I had left. I wanted to show you and then I'll weave it in after, but I wanted to show you how much was left. So this is the full skein, one full skein of Waverly. And then this is how much of the Tattersall I have left. So I'm not sure. That seems a bit odd to me that this is the one little bit of Waverly that I have. And then I have this much Tattersall left. I don't know. It's that's a major, major difference between amounts in a skein and this was gifted to me, this yarn. So I want to be very careful about how I say this, but if I were buying this yarn for myself for something that I wanted to knit, um, and I was counting on the yardage being there. Now this is a cowl, so I was quite happy to stop whenever, or, or it's a shrug, not a cowl, sorry. Um, if I had, wanted to knit something different than that because this you know I could have stopped anywhere this is a major difference and it does worry me a little tiny bit because um that's not the only uh these aren't the only skeins that I received from my friends so generously so this is the cinch we talked about I wanted to show you I brought to show you the Saturday shrug because the Saturday shrug I wear all the time. I get so, so much wear out of it. Now the Saturday shrug was a birthday present to me from me last year. And I knit this one up last January. This is also knit in Lamb and Kid, but this is Lamb and Kid Todd. And I, oh, if I had to pick between Birdie and Todd, Todd hands down every single time. I would absolutely recommend um, the the Todd yarn from Lemon Kid. I love it. So Big Birdie, it's nice, it's cozy. Um, I'm very, very grateful that I got to knit in it. And I'm very thankful to the person who bought me the yarn. It was so encouraging and so kind. And I will definitely treasure it for a long, long, long time. And I'm convinced that this will break in, as they say, really well. I, I do think it will end up fitting well because this one has no shaping at all and it has molded to my body. It looks funnel, but it's not. It's not funnel at all. That's just from where that shape. So I'll put this one on and you can see the difference. Now this one I wear multiple times in the week. So, I don't know. 
I prefer this one, that's for sure. So it comes down farther. I like this, the way it fits better. It's just wider. I love this one. And I hope that this one ends up a favorite the same way. So this is made with Todd. The colors are Blueberry, Blueberry and uh, Grand Forest. And as I say, I treated myself to this yarn. Well, the, the um, Grand Forest I had left over from a different project, um, from a shawl that I had knit, but the Blueberry I bought especially for this. And yeah, it's just so comfy and so cozy and it sits so nicely. This one I love. And I hope that the cinch will become one that I enjoy as for, as much as this one. So it's luxury yarn. This is Yak and Cashmere. And um, oh, how much is it? I think it's about 32 US dollars per skein. So it's this is Lux. And then the Big Birdie is 100% alpaca. And you can see, I don't know, if you can see that this one's longer than this one. And maybe that's why I like the fit of this one better, but I don't think so. I think it's the wideness and the different, um, the different fabric that it created. I don't know. I don't know. We'll see. We'll see how it goes. But I brought this one so that I could show you. You've definitely seen this before if you've watched our podcast. So the cinch, I'll pop that back on because it's nice and warm. And then I'll show you the next thing. Let's see how that goes. Yeah, see, I like it now. I don't know. We'll see. It's this part right here. I think it just has to stretch over my shoulders. Maybe if I had put short rows in it. If you knit the cinch and you make some adjustments to it, let me know because I am curious. My birthday yarn. So the same friend who gifted me this yarn uh, asked me again that it's your birthday and I want to do something for you and um, very, very, very dear and very special friend and and um, is there any way I can help? Can I buy you a plane ticket? Can I, how can I help you to, with your dad? And there's really nothing. And so, well, what about some yarn? Now, I had to put some of my money and like kind of pooled the money that I got for my birthday for this. Um, and I don't want to talk too much about that because, you know, talking about money is kind of vulgar, but, um, I'm very grateful to this friend because, um, she gave me another gift and it, it's it's unbelievably kind. I mean, I just feel like like she's hugging me right now. And yeah, I mean, if you have a friend who's going through something really difficult, like cancer, something that is impossibly difficult, um, I think giving somebody, I mean, if you want to give something to them, it's nice to make a meal or just go for a walk or, or whatever. But if you want to give a gift, um, I, and you're, you're a knitter, I think that yarn is such a beautiful gift because I spent hours knitting this and I thought of my friend the whole time. I thought of my dad um, and the times that we had together and um, it's so <sighs> it's so rich with memories and warmth and love and I think that this is you know this is something truly special that you can do for somebody if you you know if you wanted to do something like that so um, she also bought me uh, this yarn and this is Lamb and Kid Todd. This is Todd, the 
there's two kinds of Todd. There's Todd Worsted and the regular DK Todd, and this is the DK Todd. This one is Base Camp, and I'm so sorry for the color. Again, it's not showing very well, but this is Base Camp, and this is Chalet Chic, and together they're, they're so beautiful. I, there, I think you're getting the color really well right there. Maybe a little bit off, but yeah, this is a very um, blue leaning, dark, dark green. And then this is quite a blue leaning, minty green. They're a bit more green in real life, but yeah, anyhow. So she gifted me again this yarn and I don't know, how do you say thank you to someone like that? It's it's unbelievably generous. At any rate, um, yeah, I think I'll just celebrate her here and her generosity. Um, but I'm not going to say her name because that would just embarrass her. Um, but this beautiful, beautiful gift is going to become uh, the Antique Flora, which I'll pop a picture in so that you can see that. This is just a screenshot from my Ravelry library, but you can see in this version, they've marled two fingering weights to get that transition of color in the contrast. So this will be the main color, and then this will be the contrast color. And tomorrow is when I celebrate my birthday. So I am going to cast these on and we're going to have a phone call together and I'm going to cast them on and I know that she'll be knitting on something and I'm looking forward to that very, very much. So such a nice birthday present, such a such a nice hug. This do you do a New Year Eve cast on? I did. I normally don't. I normally don't think about, well, first of all, I normally don't cast things on on, on major holidays. Um, but New Year's Eve is not really a major holiday in our family. We play games together, uh, we watch the fireworks which we can see from our house because we live in the mountains and we can kind of see down into the valley and um, our city has a very very small little fireworks show uh, but we can see it from the house and that's fun to do that. Uh, usually we just make little nibblies to eat, we don't make a proper meal so quite frequently we make raclette um sometimes we do a fondue this time we did uh just little appetizers and we snacked on those and we played a game we went for a walk outside it was lovely but normally for us we don't do a big party um and new year's eve was quite quiet often we go tobogganing on New Year's Eve, but this year we didn't. So I had time, we watched a movie together and I had time to cast something on. And I've barely got started. This is, ah, I'm so sorry for the light. There you go, now you can see. This is Sagen yarn from um, Lotta Lothgren or Elk Market yarn. And of course, as always, everything will be in the description below. This is the Sophie shawl that I'm knitting. I'm going to knit the largest one. And um, you, the way that you do the increases, it matters whether you're on the right side or the wrong side. So this is my little stitch marker. That's so cute. Hope that focuses. Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> Maybe, let's see. I bet if I cover me, that will focus better. Everybody always does this when they're podcasting. They try to show something and it doesn't focus. And then it's some silly, like, adjusting, trying to make you see what we're looking at. And it's, um, it's, it's not that interesting, actually. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Um, what's interesting is this this yarn. It's it's beautiful yarn. It's hand dyed by Lotta Lothgren and 
Um, I have knit in it before. You've seen my Martalan cowl. Uh, as soon as I finished the Martalan cowl, I um, immediately ordered. Lotto was having a sale. I immediately ordered. You know, you'll hear a theme here. If yarn is on sale, I'll buy it. If yarn is not on sale, then often I'll just wait till it goes on sale. Sometimes I buy. Um, I buy new tudin, but new tudin is very. Uh, I would say new tudin is well for me in the Yukon, um, because I have to order almost everything. New tudin is fairly reasonably priced to begin with, so you know I just buy it. But. Um, Lotta had a sale and so I bought some yarn when she had a sale and I have to say there are very very few hand-dyed yarns that can match Lotta's hand-dyed yarns. Her skill as a dyer is out of this world, unbelievable. Her colours are beautiful, it's extremely even dyeing, it's she's I don't know how she does it, she's amazing so um and lotta is somebody that i have been following and um had one of those sort of hello friendships on instagram so hello lotta <laughs> you're watching i love your yarn but you know that and um i'm very excited to knit up this sophie shawl i actually bought the yarn to knit a different shawl um but you know, sometimes you order the yarn and then it just doesn't speak the same language as the pattern that you had in mind. And that was the case with this one. So I knew that I wanted to knit something that was very simple and just let the yarn speak for itself because it's such beautifully dyed yarn. And, um, and I knew that I wanted it to be around my neck because I have the Martalan cowl and that is one of my favorite cowls. I love it. And um, actually you saw it on the walk. I was wearing it earlier. Um, and then, so this one, I wanted it to be simple. I wanted it to be um, quite thick. So garter is very thick to wear. It makes it nice and cozy. And I am very excited about knitting this. I think I will knit it up quite quickly because yeah, look at how beautiful that is. It's so gorgeous. This colorway is called Urso and yeah, I, I love this. I love it, love it, love it, love it. And actually I wanted to knit a brown shawl or a brown scarf or a brown cowl. So I'm happy with my choice. The Sophie shawl's super easy. Um, it's a pattern by Petite Knit. Petite Knit? Yeah, I think so. We'll have it down below. Oh, there. See, that's okay now. Maybe it'll be fine. Anyhow, it's a very simple pattern. Um, I think you could probably figure it out, but I'm using the pattern and um, I'm knitting on 4.5 millimeter needles, which I think the pattern is for five millimeter. If you follow American sizing, 4.5 is seven and five millimeter is eight. 4.5 millimeter is my all-time favorite size to knit on. I knit this on 4.5, I'm knitting this on 4.5, it's just comfort. And yeah, January's my month, so I want to be comfy and cozy. So I'm going to knit this. I'm sure that I'll be done it quite, quite soon. Um, I just knit this while we were watching the film and I didn't knit very much of it, but anyhow. <laughs> um, I think that this will be a fun one to do. So I'm keeping it in this project bag. And this is one that I use all the time. I really like this one because when I'm sitting and knitting, it opens like one of those bento bags. You see, it's really, oh, You see how that is? It's really, really nice to knit from. So it creates this lovely ball when it's open that I can put my yarn in and just knit out of there. Really good. Now you might have seen that I have something special in here. <laughs> I'll show you this while I have that. So the details will be down below. It's made by a woman called Stitchcraft. 
uh, on Instagram and uh, she just opened a new store in Newfoundland in St. John's, a new yarn shop. So if you go and visit Newfoundland, definitely stop into her little yarn shop. I hope that I get the chance to do that someday. I think it would be really, really fun. So my Sophie shawl is in this bag and I'll just put that down for now and show you the other thing that I had in there. So my friend Heidi went to Taiwan. Oh, there's the cuckoo clock. <laughs> if you watch the Halloween episode, then you'll know that Natalia's not exactly thrilled with our cuckoo clock. Um, <laughs> so Heidi, my friend, uh, went to Taiwan and when she was there, she, I think she was in Taiwan, maybe she was in China when she found this. Anyhow, she went to a yarn shop. She went to Taiwan and she also went to China. She was teaching a class there and um, about lymphatic drainage, actually. In any event, she brought back this beautiful yarn. And this is bulky weight. This is yak yarn. And uh, I think that you're starting to see that I really love either rustic, if it's sheep, rustic. I love a good toothy rustic sheep wool, but I also really love yak yarn or alpaca. I, I love that. Um, so this is yak and I would say yak is maybe one of my very favorites. So this is yarn that Heidi brought back for me and I'm so lucky. It's really cool. I'm not sure what to do with it. Um, there's 58 meters in 100 grams. Recommended needle size is 8 millimeters to 10 millimeters. If you have a hat pattern or toque pattern or maybe one of these um, headband patterns that you would make if you had this yarn and you would recommend that to me, please, please put it down below because I would really love to know what I should do with this. I only have one skein of it and it's, oh, it's just so soft and lovely and I want to make something special because it was a gift. The other thing that I wanted to show you is this toque. Now this one I'll probably finish up tonight. This one is, ah, I don't know if you're getting it really well. Mm. Other northern podcasters complain about this exact same thing. The lighting in winter in the north can be quite challenging. So I hope that you're able to see this. So this is Boyland Knitworks. And ah, oh, this is so fun. So the grey yarn is some of um, Brittany's low mileage yarn and Brittany has just received back her mill run of low mileage yarn. Now this is a real treat to knit with. This I bought from the springtime. Um, she has yarn milled into, uh, well she has fleece milled into yarn and she does it um, usually twice a year. She's Crooks Fibers. I'm sure that you know because I often talk about Crooks Fibers. Crooks Fibers is local to me. She's here in the Yukon and I'm very, very proud of that. And I really enjoy Brittany. Uh, she's a, such a dear friend and such a kind person. And she puts so much energy into um, the sheep for this um, yarn. She, she knows the shepherd. She puts energy into the shepherd. Um, she knows the sheep. She goes down and visits them in Alberta and she knows the mill owner and she works carefully with the mill owner to make sure that the yarn turns out exactly the way that she hopes that it would. So this is low mileage yarn. It's beautiful. It's um, again, it's quite an expensive yarn. I have to say, this is not cheap. This um, this is 
Oh, I think the price point is around 45 Canadian dollars for one skein. So that's a lot. Um, but, you know, it's it's something quite special. So I don't buy a lot of it um, because I can't, but I do try to get one or two skeins of it. Um, and so this is from earlier this year. I bought a skein and then this one is some, um, mm -hmm, I should know this, it's super popular. Spin Cycle. This is Spin Cycle. And this one was gifted to me because um, somebody had bought it for themselves and didn't like the color. It didn't work with the other Spin Cycle that she had. And she asked me if I wanted it. And I said, yes, absolutely, I will. So this is again, gifted yarn. But um, this is Spin Cycle. So there you go. You can see pretty well. So this is that famous color changing yarn. It's quite fun to knit with because to be honest, I'm not really even sure how. <laughs> so this hat is for me to learn how to knit with this color changing yarn. And I have to say, I am having fun with it. Now I've modified the toque because um, I want the toque to be very similar to the other one that I showed you earlier, the one by Albina McLaughlin, where it's got the nice close fitting band, but then lots of volume in here. So what I did was I sized up with my needle quite a bit to give myself, um, this is tight. So this is, I think the recommended needle size, but then the rest of it, I sized up, oh, I should have written it down. I think I went up two sizes and these are old cheap, needles so how, how about that uh 3.75 millimeters <laughs> the cuckoo clocks are ringing at different times <laughs> i don't know why that is and i'm not sure which one is the right one so i'll uh, when i'm done here when I'm done here, I'm going to go check the cuckoo clocks and figure out which one is keeping accurate time. And then I'm going to fiddle around with the other one and make sure that they don't do that. That must drive Natalia crazy. <laughs> Any road. So how I did this was I, I sized up needle sizes. So this is 3.75 millimeters. Now I wonder what is the millimeter size in the pattern? No, no, I'll put it in the description. Maybe I'll figure out how to write it on the screen for you and you'll have that information. But to do the decreases at the top, I've gone down um, and maybe I need to go down again. And I'm going to actually have to probably eliminate some of the pattern as I go, but we'll see. It'll be slouchy, which I want because I really love slouchy toques. And I'm really, really enjoying this color changing yarn. I didn't know if I would or not, but I am. It's super fun. It's not showing off the pattern very well. It's very low contrast. I probably should have chosen different colors, <laughs> but I'm learning and I'm having fun learning. And I do like it and I know that I'll wear it because yeah, it's good. I think it's good. And I'm sure that this is going to come off the needles tonight. So you'll see it again soon. Now let's talk about the mods that I did on this jumper because I did make a few changes. If you've knit the Trista, you will have probably noticed that when we were walking together, but I'll show you what I did. So at the cuff, I wanted to change from the main color to the black. Um, so what I did was just slightly alter the color work so that I could do that. And then um, I did a garter row in between the, the color work and then the cuff itself. 
For the cuff, I did a broken rib, which huh, the light is really going now and I don't know if I can get it, but There we go. So you can just see that that is a broken rib stitch there. And it's two by two broken rib. I love the way broken rib looks and it's super easy to knit. Do you know how to do it? What you do is knit a regular row of knit stitches and then you do your knit purl the same way as you would create any ribbing, however you want to do it, whether you want to do um, two by two like me or one by one works you can do however you want but you do a ribbing row so knit knit purl purl knit knit purl purl and then the next row you do knit again all stockinette stitches and then knit knit purl purl knit knit purl purl so ribbing and then stockinette or knit and then ribbing and then stockinette and you just alter all the way up and it creates this broken rib that I really like the look of. And then I love to finish um, jumpers that I make in Nutiden with an I-cord bind off. I love the neatness that it gives and um, it gives some durability there. I just, I like it very, very much. So I always, when I'm knitting a jumper in Nutiden, I always bind off with an I-cord. As I was saying, this is a Jennifer Steingas, and I find on my body that Jennifer Steingas patterns fit like a dream, especially when I knit them in um, either Nutiden or Latlopi. They fit so, so well. I love them. I have one on my needles right now. Um, I'm knitting that one in yarn that I got from um, wild in the woods and uh, I'm not going to show it to you right now. I'll show it to you. I, I'm barely into the yoke so I'll wait and show it to you when I have the yoke that I can show off but I'm knitting another one right now. That one I'm excited about it. This is the Trista. I'm so happy with how this turned out. I love the colors. The fit is fantastic. I really enjoy it. I for my shape and the way that I like to wear my jumpers and and my body I have never had a problem with Jennifer Steingas patterns you cannot go wrong in my opinion with a Steingas I just ah oh, I love her patterns I think she is a genius she lives in Maine and she actually had um some quite scary health problems over the last year but she's doing better again I'm very happy for her she's feeling well again and um, she has just recently had a sale I don't know if it's still going on but if it is then go and get a Jennifer Stein guest pattern if you've never knit one before they're very popular and there is a very good reason if you want to knit a yoke color work yoke start with Stein guest. she's so great I think you'll enjoy so I did the exact same thing there on the bottom. Um, I did a broken rib, I changed the colors, and then I bound off with an I-cord edge. And I am very pleased with that. So a few days ago, um, it was during Christmas. It was during actually during Romuel. Do you, <laughs> do you know what Romuel is? So Romuel is this Norwegian word that um, it means that week between Christmas and New Year. And I, I love Romuel. In fact, this year I spread it out into two weeks of Romuel and I'm really happy with that. I'm enjoying it very, very, very much. I love the quietness. I love the slow to just no expectations, see what happens in the day and just, you know, play games and enjoy because Putting together the holiday season, if you're a mother, is, and if you're the one doing all of the putting together, as I am in our family, it's a lot of work. A lot, lot of work. And I feel like Romuel is the time when I get to enjoy that, all the energy that I put in preparing. So our house is still looking very, very, very festive, and we're still enjoying, um, you know, we're still enjoying the holiday season. Um, and so a few days ago, I, um, I was 
I just wanted to get something off my needles. Now, I probably could have finished that toque, but I didn't feel like it because oh, there's some finicky little decisions I have to make about how I'm going to finish it. Um, this one I was knitting, but um, I didn't want to finish this one when, when I was, you know, I didn't want to finish it. I wanted, uh, so I wanted a quick fix, you know? I wanted a quick, like, on and off the needles. And also, uh, I've been wanting to knit myself a hot water bottle cover for quite some time. If you watch um, Knitting by the Sea, Saratoga Knits, um, she has knit some, if you watch Mrs. Valgren Makes, I really like Mrs. Valgren Makes. This one was inspired by her, as you may already know. Um, and so I cast this on. This is some uh, Let Lopi that I had in my yarn cupboard. I've had this yarn for quite a while and I just use bits and pieces of it. Um, I use Let Lopi a lot for mittens. It's sturdy, it's tough wearing, um, Peter cannot wear through it. <laughs> it's Icelandic yarn and um, that's what this is. So this is a hot water bottle. It took me two days to knit and um, I'm really, really enjoying it. It's such a treat. So yeah, that's what it looks like finished. <laughs> so lovely and warm and cozy. I have one more yarn that I wanted to show you and then let's talk a little bit about color. So the last yarn that I have to show you is this one. And this one is so beautiful. Ah, but the color's not showing up. Bummer. Hmm. I'm very excited to knit in this yarn. This is um, yarn that was dyed by a woman called Amélie. It's beautiful. The colors are gorgeous. Um, they're, yeah, maybe you can see, they're deep tonal navies and blues and brown and kind of greens and all the colors that I really, really enjoy. Aren't the rich colors beautiful? I love that bright blue in there. These don't show up very well on the camera when I'm podcasting earlier, but here they do. This is the right color now that you see. And the colorway is called David, and that is the name of my grandfather. So what I wanted to do as soon as I saw this yarn, I thought, oh, I have to have that. So my plan is, and I ordered it right away, um, Amelie's David sells out, or David, sells out really fast, that colorway. I don't know if she's going to make it again. You can ask her. <laughs> but um, it's beautiful. She's by Amélie and she's on Instagram. I'll put the link below, but she dyes up beautiful yarns. They're lovely colors. And this one I bought because it's David and the colorway is David. And I knew right away that I wanted to knit myself a pair of mittens. And my idea is that I'll put the mittens on. Now, my grandfather died many, many, many years ago, like 40 years ago, um, something like that. Um, but he was such a wonderful man. He was so kind and so funny and oh, I loved him. And my idea, as soon as I saw this colorway on Instagram where she dyed David colorway, I thought, I love the color. And I thought, if I knit myself a pair of mittens, it will be like my grandfather's holding my hand. So I thought that would be so cute. And so I'm going to knit uh, the pattern by Miss Evil, um, who is a Swedish knitter who does really, really cool recipes. I've mentioned Miss Evil on the podcast before. Natalia adores her. Um, I've knit her from her recipes many times. I absolutely love knitting her recipes. Uh, they're wonderful. If you don't know Miss Evil Knits yet, then let me introduce you because I think she's awesome. And she has a pair of mittens called the Vila mittens. 
and it's just a recipe it's not a pattern but it's a recipe to guide you into knitting mittens that will fit your hands exactly you can use any kind of yarn you want and she talks to you she has a series of videos on the villa you can also read about them on her blog i'll put all the stuff in the description below but um, she tells you how to choose the needle size and how to knit and what's special about the Rila mittens is that you start knitting at the thumb and you knit the thumb and then you pick up and you knit the hand and you will get a fit that is really really fit just to you and so I thought what a perfect thing to do with this beautiful David yarn by Amelie so I am looking forward to casting those on as well, and I'll show you them very soon, I'm sure. Have you ever knit the Vila mittens or anything else by Miss Evil? Her, her patterns are fantastic, and she encourages you to just go out and try things on your own, which I think is really great. So let's move to color because I often get asked how I choose colors and I feel like, first of all, I feel like I'm not the right person to ask about color. There are people who are really, really genius with color. Um, Natalia has actually been studying on her own color theory and she took some classes in school. See, now it's sitting really well. Now I like it. Hmm. Anyhow, Natalia has done some uh, color theory. She can talk about it um, more intelligently than I can. With me, I feel like it's almost always a happy accident, but I will show you my trick. So what I do now, lots of people will tell you, oh, take a picture and then um, put it in grayscale, like just put it in black and white and you'll see how the contrast works out and that would have been smart for this toque because I would have seen that um, the blue and the grey do not have a high contrast but I'm not too worried about that. I actually like the way this looks. What I do is I love children's books. I absolutely love them. Um, yeah, never mind why. I just really, really love children's books. I love looking at them. I love to read them. And so I, when I'm thinking about how to pair colors together, I start digging through. You can see we have so many children's books on the shelves and we have given many away. Um, when the children were small, I used to go to a secondhand shop that sold five children's books, like children's books, like this one, hardcover, beautiful children's books, five children's books for one Canadian dollar, which is like less than 25 cents a book. I mean, we ended up with so many books and some of them we loved so much that I just couldn't part with them. And I'm glad that I didn't because I love to look at them. But here's my way that I figure out how to match colors together. I look at the illustrations in the books and I look for color combinations that I really love. And then I go and look at yarn and sometimes in my yarn cupboard or um, sometimes online. Now, online is really hard to get the color. You know, it's hard for uh, people to photograph color and then get it accurate. Like you're not seeing the accurate colors right now here at all um, but what I do is look and this is one of the books that I quite enjoy this is Maudie and Bear and like look at the colors in the illustrations the book is lovely the story is beautiful but the color combinations look at that so look at Maudie and Bear and then Look at that, right? And I'm going to, the whole idea of knitting this is to wear it with this. I'm looking forward to having a brown 
shawl or brown scarf to wear with this. And if you look at this, you'll see some of those same colors. So the hat of the bear and the brown. So that's one book. And you get the idea right away how I do that. Because I don't actually know that much about it, but professional illustrators, of course they do. So why not, right? This is another one of the books that we really, really loved when the children were little. Natalia loved this book. And I really enjoy the colors. So yeah, have a look. You can see that purpley color and the blues and the yellows. So pretty. Let's see if I can get another one. Look at the colors. So there's another one. This one is a beautiful book. Look at those colors. And in my opinion, the, the best one of them all, my very favorite illustrator is Jackie Morris. And look at how Jackie pairs colors. I love Jackie's artwork. Now you might recognize the name. Maybe you don't recognize this book, but you might recognize the name. I've shown some of her artwork before on our podcast. And um, she is also the illustrator of The Lost Words, which I have here. This beautiful book, you probably know this one. I certainly have shown it here on the podcast. So she's the illustrator of this book, The Lost Words. I highly recommend, whether you have children or don't have children, this is a great book to have. It's beautiful. So there's that one. But this one, the colors are so rich. This is the Barefoot Books of Classic Poems. Colors are so beautiful. So, so beautiful. Look at that. I mean, you're not seeing them very well. It's sort of, this might not be as good an idea in real life as it is in my head because of the, the falling light that we have right now, but I think you can kind of see. I think this is a great way to put color together. Look at that, right? And, oh, this is one of the poems the children memorized when they were little. This is an Emily Dickinson poem. I'll read it to you. There is no frigate like a book to take us lands away, nor any coursers like a page of prancing poetry. This traverse may the poorest take without a press of toll. How frugal is the chariot that bears the human soul. Isn't that beautiful? There's another one that I really like that I think I'll read to you as well. It's by William Carlos Williams, and I think it's very appropriate for this time of year. This is just to say, I have eaten the plums that were in the icebox, and which you were probably saving for breakfast. Forgive me, they were delicious, so sweet and so cold. This is a gorgeous book of poetry. I think anybody would enjoy this. Certainly, if you have children in your life, I highly, highly recommend the Barefoot Book of Classic Poems. It's beautiful. It's a treat to read. The selection of poems is wonderful. And the artist's work, Jackie Morris, is spectacular. She's also an amazing knitter, and I recommend that you follow her on Instagram. She's great fun to follow there. So this is probably my favorite. 
And then there's also this one. And this is the one that I was thinking about when I was choosing these colors. See the relationship? I was thinking about this book, which is Natalia's, and I chose those colors. You see? So that's my trick for pairing colors together because I am not an artist and not an illustrator and, um, and I don't know anything about color theory, but that seems to work really well for me. I'm very happy with that method. And um, so there's a little trick for you. And I'm curious to know how you figure out how to put colors together. Do you like to knit with color? Do you like to do, um, Oh, do you like like the vibrant colors like I like or do you prefer the more um, muted colors or the more do you like the really bold bright colors or what what do you like? I particularly love these rich kind of colors and to be honest the Tattersall I didn't think I would like it at first but now I really really <clears throat> Pardon me. I really, really love it. Knit up with the Waverly. It's look at how it's changed. If you like fluorescence, you'll really like the Lemon Kids yarns. They do lots of fluorescence, and they're beautiful. And if that's what you like, then then don't pair it with Waverly. <laughs> but I really like the combination together. Look at how different it is. Um. But you can see by the colors around me. These are the colors that I really love. And for a while I wasn't really choosing them to knit in. Um, I think I was choosing somebody else's colors and sort of wanting to explore what it would be like to be somebody different. But I've come back to the colors that I love and I'm knitting in those. And uh, that's what this year for me is all about. I, I want 2024 to be about choosing colors that I feel happy, passionate about, that I love. I mean, these two are just spectacular and I can't wait to knit them. Um, for a while, I thought maybe I'd like to knit neutrals and I maybe it would be better if everything was just neutral and then everything would match everything else. But yeah, no, not for me. Anyhow, I hope that 2024 is off to a good start for you. I hope that you've enjoyed seeing the knitting that I've been doing. And uh, we have another episode coming up that will be out in about a week or so. Um, lots of stuff that Natalia has been up to. She's curated most of that episode. There's some cr crafts that we've done over the um, holiday break. And I'm excited to show those to you because we've had a lot of fun doing those. And Natalia has all kinds of crochet to show you. She's been up to uh, quite a lot, actually. And then probably the Sunday shrug that she's working on will be done. And you can have a look at that. So this is the cinch shrug again. And I'll keep playing with it and figure out how I like to wear it. For now, I'm just grateful for the experience of knitting it and so thankful to my friend who uh, who gave me the yarn that was ever so thoughtful and so nice. Thank you very much for being here and for watching and enjoying. If you like what you see on our podcast, please do hit the like button. When you give us the thumbs up, what that does is it shows the rest of people who are watching um, that you like the content and then it suggests it to others who like content similar to what we do. This video will suggest to you, to, to them, to come and watch here. And I think that that's nice. I find lots of YouTube presenters that I enjoy watching because YouTube suggests them. It's something to do with the, the mysteries of the algorithm. The other thing, if you subscribe, that's also really helpful to us. It's helpful to us. It's encouraging. We know that um, that you enjoy watching. We don't monetize our channel and um, and we want to keep it that way because we don't want ads. You know, we don't want it interrupted with ads. 
and we want to offer you especially the knitting content freely on YouTube. We do have a Patreon and that's how we support the production side of this podcast. And one of the more recent things is we've ordered some lights and I'm waiting for them to come because today would have been so good if we had those lights to, uh, to help with the color so that you could see the color better, more, whatever. In any event, um, Patreon is how we are able to keep content coming and we produce a lot more content on our Patreon. Uh, you can search us up for for that. It's Knit My Way Home on Patreon. We have a couple of different tiers. We have some new things coming in 2024 that we didn't do last year. It's worked really, really well for us. Um, we really appreciate if you're one of the people who is supporting us through Patreon and bringing this content to other people. We're so thankful for that. Um, very, very happy to have your encouragement and your support. And we look forward to 2024 together. Take care of each other. We'll see you soon. Bye bye.